namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Buddhang saranangachami, Dhammang saranangachami, Sangang saranangachami, Tutiyampi buddhang saranangachami, Tutiyampi dhammang saranangachami, Yutiyampi sangam saranam gacchami Tatiyampi buddham saranam gacchami Tatiyampi dhammam saranam gacchami Tatiyampi sangam saranam gacchami Welcome, friends, to this Wednesday evening Dhamma discussion and meditation practice. So I hope all of you were able to get the uh, mailing that I sent out on Tuesday with the uh, subject of tonight's uh, discussion, Dhamma topic. And we've covered this uh, before sometimes, but... Uh, as, as the, the title says, it's, uh, it's a subject for daily recollection. So these are the five subjects for daily recollection that, uh, you know, a meditator or especially a, a Buddhist meditator, that the Buddha suggests in reflecting on these uh, five realities of, of life. And the first one is, I am subject to aging. I have not gone beyond aging. This is the first fact that one should often reflect upon, whether a woman or a man or a monk or a nun, uh, they should reflect on that, that we're all subject to aging. And then a person might ask, well, why do we want to reflect on that? We all know, you know, that about aging, right? Uh, but this is the B Buddha's reply to that. Uh, now, the Buddha says, you know, there are people that are intoxicated with their youth, especially, so this applies to probably young people and maybe up to about 40 years old, I guess. So people get intoxicated with their youth and sometimes, especially younger people, they, they think uh, they're kind of invincible or, uh, you know, the aging and uh, even the other things are far from their mind. And it's not a, a pleasant subject to uh, contemplate, you know, even though people know they're aging, they, uh, they, they don't like to contemplate it. And that's why a lot of people try to prevent the signs of aging, you know, when people start to reach 40 years old, and, uh, you know, might start getting wrinkles or they might start, uh, you know, other problems, their eyesight starts going bad and, uh, and so on. So those signs of aging, and we can see it even in a modern, uh, you know, media, you know, usually uh, actors or news broadcasters or even actors, when they grow older, they, it gets more difficult to find them uh, jobs because they like the, the media, especially when, you know, television and only if they need a role where there's an older person, they, you know, 
they like to pick young ones, and especially in the newscasts, we see this uh, happening. The older people get phased out, you know, weather forecasters <laughs> or other types of people. So uh, this idea of somehow that uh, aging is a bad thing and uh, they want to project the youth. And then, of course, the youth of use of cosmetics, again, with usually that same general uh, category population, you know, singers, uh, television personalities, movie stars, but even ordinary people, you know, to get the jobs, right? And uh, certain jobs, and, you know, the younger people are more attractive to, uh, you know, <laughs> employers, I suppose, at least in certain jobs. Uh, anyway, so this, uh, and so people that are intoxicated with their health, health they're, they're less apt to think about, uh, uh, you know, in controlling their minds. And so in the pursuit of that wanting to pursue youth and to deny old aging, they may tell lies, they may, uh, do other things uh, or, you know, just do other kind of unskillful actions. So they, they resort to, you know, improper uh, conduct and then have to uh, expect the results of that negative action. So that's why the Buddha suggested people reflect on that so that they, they know that you know, even though we might be young, uh, that youth and those good looks could be taken away, uh, you know, at any time. People get in an accident, they become disfigured or maimed in one way or another, or through so many other causes, people could use, lose those, you know, attributes of, of uh, youth, right? Uh, stronger health, uh, good looks, so to speak, uh, and uh, everything working properly. But that can be taken away due to impermanence. That can be taken away real quick. Uh, and that's just the nature of life. So people that reflect on them, the nature of age, they will know that uh, this uh, life and youth is impermanent. And uh, you know, prepare their minds that when it happens to accept it and wh wh why hide it? You know, then when people start getting uh, older, you know, and they have accepted it, then they enjoy it. Yeah, it's good, better to be older than to be younger, you know, in certain, <laughs> in certain aspects. Anyway, uh, you know, if one has, has taken care of their life, you know, they don't all have, a, when they retire, they don't have to work. They, you know, enjoy life more. So, you know, there's a lot of good aspects of getting old too. So anyway, that's one thing, the, the reality of, uh, you know, to reflect on the aging, that we have not gone beyond aging. And even people who are already old, they're getting older. <laughs> so we're already old, but they keep on getting older and older every year. Uh, five or 10 years, you can visibly notice, uh, you know, old age coming on. Uh, and uh, then the older you get, you, there's no way you can hide. That. Now the subject, the second subject for the contemplation is, I'm of the nature to become ill. I have not be gone beyond illness. And what is the meaning of not be gone beyond aging and illness? is because that's the nature of conditioned life. When you're born into the body, that is the, the nature of it. It's going to get uh, aging and it's going to be subject to various illnesses and diseases. And the next one even uh, to death, because that's the nature of impermanence. That's the nature of conditioned uh, life. And so a lot of people, they might do a lot of things to keep healthy, you know, they eat health food or they exercise and, you know, do a lot of things, but still they get sick. Even people who, you know, take care, try to remain healthy, they're still subject to uh, uh, sickness or, you know, aging and sickness. And this is not a, a bad thing, you know, it's, it's a lot of people think, oh, that's, 
that's a morbid, you know, think about that. No, it's reality because it happens to people all the time. Even young people get sick and get diseases that they don't know about. And so when it happens, you won't say, why me? Or, you know, I, I checked all the boxes, you know, why am I, why am I, this is happening to me. It shouldn't be happening to me. Why shouldn't it? Because that's the nature of, uh, of the conditioned life. And that's what the Buddha wanted to emphasize. So by contemplating, it's not a morbid thing. It's just to prepare our mind for when these things happen, we won't be kind of taken by surprise or uh, try to fight it, you know, because people spend, you know, cosmetics and and plastic surgeries and all these other kind of things, even diets and so on to be healthy and sports equipment and all these kind of there's a billion billions of dollars of business. And so people promote that idea. Of course, business promotes the idea that you stay young and healthy. Of course, we want to naturally, but you can do that in natural ways without, uh, you know, uh, spending, you know, so much uh, money on doing those things. There's ways you can do it. You know, practice yoga every day, practice deep breathing every day. You know, you can get some uh, moderate, you know, moderate kind of exercise without spending uh, hundreds of dollars a month going to the gym, you know, (laughs) all these other kind of things. And then get injured when you, you know, overstrain yourself at the gym. So, uh, you know, I've never been to a gym in my life really. Well, I take that back when I was young in the YMCA, I went, <laughs> went to the YMCA, you know, gym, but uh, since then, uh, you know, any, anyway. So then the third one, the third subject, of course, is the natural uh, outgrowth of Ill, aging and illness is death. To reflect I'm of the nature to, to die, I have not gone beyond death. And this is a, a brings in the idea of karma. That even young people die. We all know that even babies die, and uh, toddlers die, and, and you know adolescents die, and teenagers die in all kind of ways, uh, un- unsuspectedly. And people who thought they were in prime of health, athletes also drop dead on the, the sports field and so on. Uh, and that's a lot to do with, uh, you know, our past and accumulated karma as well. Uh, but anyway, the, the uh, reality of death is that when you were, you were born, basically, you were born with a one way ticket to the graveyard, or to the cremation ground. And, uh, you know, the Buddha said that Life is not certain. The only thing certain in life is death. Because life is not certain. It can be taken away in a heartbeat due to so many unexpected, uh, you know, reasons, accidents and so on. Uh, But, uh, you know, death is certain. And and so the, the, the reason why we contemplate, the Buddha had us contemplate on these aging, illness, and death is one of the main reasons is not to procrastinate uh, in your practice of the Dhamma, not thinking, well, I'll wait and I'll meditate, I'll wait and observe the precepts, uh, you know, later on in life after I've enjoyed everything. Well, (laughs) again, (laughs) that old life may not come, or by the time you get older or sick, you, it saps your energy and you won't be able to, to exert the energy necessary to develop, you know, meditation practice, especially, you know, to develop your meditation practice, uh, you know, sitting meditation and, and being uh, alert and mindful. So, uh, you know, that's the, the reason for, uh, Contemplating aging, sickness, and, and death is to overcome laziness or procrastinating, thinking I still have 10 years more, 20 years more, whatever excuses people might, uh, you know, come up with. Uh, and 
Now the, the fourth of the subjects for contemplation is about the, to reflect on everything dear and delightful to me will change and vanish. And that means the contemplating impermanence. So again, you know, what is delightful to us? Youth is delightful to us. Health is delightful to us. Uh, and of course, all the objects of the sensory world, you know, uh, delightful food, sounds you hear, people are always going to restaurants and, you know, all this music is a billion dollar business and everybody has a headphones and always listening to things, even when they're out walking in the woods, I've seen people listening to headphones, they can't even listen to the natural sounds, they have to have music going on in their ears, you know, even <laughs> at the beach or some other places, anyway. Uh, so, the you know, but all those things can be taken away. Our senses can be, you know, taken away as we can't experience those things. And about, because everything is impermanent. So to, it's a reflection on impermanence and that the, you're going to have to live without those things. But people get so addicted to all the little toys and, and, uh, circle of friends and uh, so many things, all their internet chat groups and all these other things, uh, TikTok, what are people going to do even if because of impermanence, you know, the internet goes down, people have to be off of TikTok or uh, tweet for two days, they go mad, you know, people live on that stuff and uh, they wouldn't know how to, a lot of people wouldn't know how to live without those things. I mean, they, they would eventually, but, you know. So uh, that's uh, that contemplation about uh, the nature of impermanence and not to be so reliant on all these things for our sensory stimulation. Uh, because again, they could be uh, taken away in a, in a heartbeat. do again to many causes and conditions. <clears throat> now the last one is, I'm the owner of my kama, born of my kama, supported by my kama, and everything I do, good or bad, skillful or unskillful, I'll be the heir of you know, I will inherit that. And if it's not only inheriting in the, in uh, the rest of this life, then even in the next life. So, uh, but especially, you know, that we reap the uh, effects of our karma, uh, some effects come immediately. You know, if you curse at somebody, they may punch you in the face or uh, whatever, or, uh, you know, impulsively act on your, you know, passions and so on, and then uh, immediately you know, get, get arrested by the police or something. So some things may happen years later, months later, years later. And again, if that karma isn't expired by the, when you die, some of it may even go with you to the next life. So that's the meaning of it. It's to and the reason why we make mistakes, break the precepts or accumulate all kinds of stress and so on, because uh, we don't, we don't meditate and we don't uh, reflect on those other uh, things. So uh, that's the point, not to neglect the Dhamma practice, because uh, that's why, you know, we have to keep on experiencing uh, worry, fear, anxiety, guilt, worry, remorse, and fear, or just restlessness, or, you know, incompleteness, loneliness, uh, depression, so, so many, you know, mental states people go through that cause them uh, suffering. And it's basically because they don't, 
you know, practice the Dhamma and they, and they, or they wait until it's too late. You know, we accumulate so much negative karma, people wait until they're, they're, you know, caught up in stress, they're 40, 50, 60 years old, and they've been accumulating all kinds of stress for 40, 50, 60, or 70 years, and then they think, oh, now I better start practicing Dhamma, but by then, uh, you know, there's a lot more stuff you have to work through, and it's much harder to, uh, you know, reach those deeper levels of concentration and inner happiness that comes from, you know, being more grounded in the present moment. So, uh, those five reflections, those are things that we should uh, uh, reflect on. And uh, especially when it happens, you know, when, when it happens, you notice something happening in your body, aging or sickness, or, or anybody dies, it's a time to think, ah, yes, I haven't gone beyond that either. You know, now a lot of you are older, uh, you know, and you got relatives who are getting old, getting dying. You can see that very clearly. You have genes that might uh, be passed that you have from your parents uh, that have accumulated these kind of diseases or illnesses or, and so on. So, you know, it's creating worry and anxiety in the mind. And uh, so, you know, the meditation is really the only thing or the best thing uh, that we can do that's non-drug related or otherwise to, uh, you know, deal with these kind of problems. And, but again, you have to develop, start meditation when you're younger, when you still are able to, not putting it off because it gets harder and harder to uh, practice once you're getting older and then you're accumulating more uh, physical problems and so on. And then have more karmic accumulation that you have to undo uh, because of, you know, the, those uncontrolled behaviors. Okay, friends, so basically I hope you're all able to read that sutta. If you weren't, then uh, you still have it hopefully in your email. You go back and read it again. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what I wanted to uh, remind you all, all about because, uh, you know, it's something that the Buddha encourages us to reflect on all the time. And even if we don't, you know, because we can see it happening all the time in, in your outer life. If it's not with you, look around, your parents, family, uh, people all over in, in, the, in the media, and, uh, you know, movie stars, singers, uh, every, every single person, you know, politicians, famous people, they're encountering these four things all the time. And uh, we say, ah, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, it happened to them, but, you know, kind of, you know, underneath, we think it's not going to happen to me. So anytime we hear these things, is a time to just reflect, ah, oh, yes, okay. Okay, now let's open up, see if anybody has any questions. I see some, uh, there might be some things in the chat group. Okay, so, so there's echo and can't hear Bhante. Now, is, is that problem been resolved? Everybody can hear okay, there's no echo out there. Just shake your head, yes or no. I can only see about five of you on my uh, on my screen, a uh, little your thumbnail the videos there. Uh, okay. Okay, all of those were about that. Okay, so uh, there's a question with Damon, it seems. I see the golden hand up there. Okay, Damon. Oh. Shoot. Thank you. Okay. Um, I uh, I understand the takeaways that you made that you said about adult ways to practice and don't be reliant on sensual uh, pursuits. Now, uh, w later on, though, in that sutta, um, what I if you could explain why why does it say that um, I am not the only one subject to aging, uh, that paragraph looks very interesting, but I don't understand it. What, what's the point of repeating to yourself, I am not the only one subject to aging, 
to the extent that there are beings passing away and arising are all subject. To, I have not. Yeah. What's that whole, whole? Why does he even bother with that paragraph? Well, maybe somebody is so self-possessed or obsessing about their own little problems that they temporarily forget that everybody's got all these same problems. So it's at that point where we're so obsessed and caught up in our own little drama, whether it's with your family members or whether it's your health. And, you know, half of the world has got worse problems than you do. And but we get all wrapped up in our own little problems, woe with me and this and that. And but, you know, again, half the world has got wor worse problems uh, than you in all those categories. So, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't uh, get so worried about our own little petty problems. So it's I think it's a, a reminder just to remind ourselves that we're not the only one with these problems because we tend to overlook that when we're so caught up, you know? Uh, he, go, he, he goes on to say that um, in the same paragraph, he says, and when you reflect on, on this, that other people have these problems or half the world, whatever you said, then the factors of the past take what is that? Why, why would the, why would the fact, what are the, what are they talking about there? The fact that, but then you under, uh, the factors of the path would be the eightfold path. You would start getting right understanding and you would, you would uh, reflect on the nature of you know, everybody that's born, even rich and famous people, uh, they all have died, they've all been sick, uh, they've all grown old. And they've all had all kind of problems, you know, and the uh, presidents get assassinated and all kind of things. Uh, even the Pope, you know, or something like that. So uh, it's a way of, you know, just uh, understanding that it is a universal so that the right understanding dawns on you. And then maybe the sense of urgency to change your karma, especially with the uh, the fourth one about or the fifth one, I'm owner, owner of my comma, uh, you know, and everything I do is so you start reflect on your actions and then how am I going to change? OK, the Buddha talked about this right understanding, right thought. You start developing these factors of the path. OK, yeah, now, thank you for explaining that. That's really those are, you know, the other parts. Of, I mean, I've heard the five recollections so many times but I never read the rest of the Sutta before. So thank you. That, that's why it's good actually to read the whole Sutta because some little gems are some part buried in the beginning or buried in the end. Uh, and we tend to just scan through things and find the things that we want to, you know, read or that we think are important and then skip the rest. But sometimes uh, these little things are, uh, you know, included as you uh, uh, found out, you know. Yeah, yeah, good, thank you. And that's why it's good to reread the suttas. You know, we might have read read them quickly one time and missed a few things. So to to read and reread them, that's why we go over these. This is the second or the third time is because I've been doing these Zoom programs now since at the time of COVID, that's how many, three years, almost four years. And I've repeated uh, a lot of these things, uh, you know, over and over. And the purpose of that is to refresh it and to remind you. Great, thanks. Any other uh, questions come up? Going once. There's a question in the chat. You know, you know, I'm really, I'm really disappointed that there are more questions about this, Bonte. It's such an important. I don't care how many times you've gone over it. I just think, why, why wouldn't there be any questions about this? It's so interesting. Well, it's so obvious too. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, there is a question in the chat, Bonte. Is it? Okay. 
what is meant by I have Kama as my resort in Bhikkhu Bodhi translation? Uh, I would have to reread that particular uh, as my resort as the, well, because it's a habit and we're going to resort to it. The Kama, you know, whatever, whatever we have done, uh, whether it's a good or a bad action, uh, it's, it's going to come to us. So it, it's like, that's your resort, or you're going to resort back to it. You're going to, uh, keep going back to it, like good actions. If you get the, if you get a good experience from, you know, practicing generosity and metta and helping others and patience, when you, when you see the, uh, good effects of doing the good karma or avoiding the bad karma, developing the mind, you're going to resort to that more and more and more. So it's there within you, both the good effects of the good things you've done, the Dhamma practice you've done, as well as the bad things you may have done, the unskillful things you may have done, like break, breaking some precepts and so on. And, and your mind is going to go back to that and, and worry about it and, or obsess about it. So that's, you know, it's resorting to whether you want to or not, the mind is going to go to it, is going to go back to it. So I think that is the meaning of this uh, resort. The, the memory of the things that we've done since childhood to the and especially learning Dhamma, then we're using that to help transform our actions in speech and even our thoughts, our thoughts, speech, and actions, which are then going to be the resort for our future actions, which will then keep decreasing and weakening the accumulated negative actions uh, that we've accumulated. So we have to resort to them over and over and over again. We have to resort to meditating each day. We have to resort to reading a sutta each day. Uh, because we, we, we experience the, the good effects that come from, from doing that. Mm. Oh, I see another golden hand here. Michael, <laughs> Michael, go ahead. Hi, Bonte. I just wanted to comment that the reason that people may not be asking a lot of questions is because we pretty much know it um, from the four holy messengers, well, messengers, which are which are old age, sickness, death, and the uh, the monk going to meditate, and right speech, right right speech, right action, right behavior, which is the same thing as right mind, right speech, right body. So we know these things. Our challenge is to put them into practice in every moment. That's our challenge. Can we do it? And that's what the Buddhas are urging us to do. Some people will be able to do it. Some people may not be able to do it mm. because karma is very deep. And we know there's a lot of people that have no belief in any religion or doing anything. And, you know, the, basically they're probably not going to make it in this life in terms of Dhamma. But you mm. never know. You never know. Mm. If you read my autobiography and seen how I, you know, grew up the first 20, uh, you know, five years of my life, you know, who would have thought I would have become a monk, mm. right? You never know. It happened very quickly. Uh, mm. So, mm. yeah, Thank you, just, you never know. I okay, to... uh, Surya, do you have a question? Um, I don't really have a question. Um, I, I just wanted to say I'm not able to stay the whole night. I just wanted to come on to see what this was about. Um mm -hmm. But next time I'll, you know, I'll make the commitment and be pre more prepared. But as regard to, uh, you know, the question like, why aren't more people asking questions? Sometimes people just need to process if they're not familiar with it, or even if they are, are familiar with it, still it's a little time of, of processing what you've read, what you've heard, what you've listened to. So that is my input a little bit with that. So I wanted to just come on and um, I met you on Sunday at the Long Island Buddhist Meditation Center. Uh, and so I wanted to see what it was about, but I wasn't prepared to stay for the whole evening. 
Um, and I did order your book. So I look forward to next week. And my other question is, uh, do you send out earlier what you were going to be discussing prior to the to the discussion? I sent out that sutta, that link to the sutta yesterday, but you were oh, not on our mailing okay. list. You okay. weren't on our mailing list. Okay. So now usually July... I try to send it out on Mondays, but yesterday because I, it, uh, you know, I was kind of busy, I didn't get it out until yesterday. Okay. So now that I'm on the mailing list, I will get it earlier, and then I'll be able to be prepared. Okay. okay. But so yeah. you, now you're going to miss the best part of the evening, which is the meditation practice. I'm sorry about that, but thank you so much. Have a beautiful, blessed evening, everyone. Good night. Be well. Okay. Ante, I, I have a question. Well, I saw uh, yeah. Marcia, Marcia hand. raised her hand there. Okay, go ahead, Marcia. Um, good evening, Bunte and everyone. Um, the sutta that we are discussing this e evening, um, even even though some of us have read it many times and we understand it, but I personally um, appreciate uh, um, hearing it over and over again um, because um, it, it is very comforting to me and um, and it gives me enlightening. So I, I appreciate um, yeah, what, what we have. That's why the Buddha uh, recommend people to reflect yes, on it even every over day. Over and over. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Udayana. Yeah. Uh, what, what, is, uh, what is meant by the run of the mill people? Can you explain what that is? Well, usually it's translated as the untaught many folk. That means people who have not heard the Dhamma or don't are not even interested in the Dhamma, the ordinary person that's just living a, a you know, a, a life, you know, just of a habit and uh, basically of sensual pleasure seeking and, you know, just uh, self-centeredness and things like that. But, you know, people who have not heard the Dhamma, and even if they heard it, they, they don't get interested in it. Uh, you know, maybe they don't believe it because it belongs to, you know, a different religion. So they say, oh, I can't believe in that. You know, that's, so and so didn't say that or something. Or it's not in my book. So, you know, they may not believe in karma. They might not believe in rebirth and so on. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, there's one last question here. Is there any scientific proof that karma follows one past the grave? Probably not any scientific proof because the scientists haven't meditated or they haven't developed a test tube or a microscope that can follow consciousness after death. Now, if they do, then that would be good, right? Now, just think of it. If science could, you know, go in, in the hospital, somebody's about ready to die, right? So they go and they they put some electrodes on their brain and this and that. You know, all of a sudden, at the, at the time of death, when the, when the mind goes blank, you know, they see this little flash of light, you know, uh, go somewhere and uh, see it go out through the hospital roof or whatever. I don't know, but, you know, maybe, maybe that. If they could actually see that, maybe they'll start to think about it. But they can't. So they don't take the Buddha's, uh, they don't think the Buddha was enlightened in the first place. They don't think he could remember past lives. And they think it's just a bunch of hocus pocus or mumbo jumbo. And uh, they don't give any credit to it they, because it can't be proved. They don't take the mind to be a reliable source of wisdom, uh, you know, like telepathic wisdom or psychic powers. They're, they're all skeptical. They got to prove it. So that's the problem. They're not going to be able to prove it, at least, you know, probably in the foreseeable future. So anyway, friends, I think that's uh, enough for our discussion now because we uh, don't want to uh, cut into our meditation time. So, uh, you know, those are all good questions. And uh, yeah, just try to, uh, you know, remember this sutta and uh, whenever you Remember it, maybe not every day, but at least once a week. I mean, you know, jot a, jot a note on your computer. Hey, uh, reread this sutra once a week or something like that. Okay? Okay. So we'll take a short break, come back, get ready for 
So yoga and then meditation. Baskar, thank you for that uh, link. Thank you, Perna, for that uh, uh, comment about Virginia. I'll have to check that out. Friends, I would stand straight, relax your arms at the sides, just gently close your eyes. First of all, just feel your feet pressing the ground, feel that weight of the body pressing the feet on the floor.
feel your hands hanging at the sides, your hands and fingers. Feel the weight of the arms hanging from the shoulders, relax the shoulders. Feel the clothing touching the skin on different places, especially the stomach or chest. Arms. Now feel your head balanced on top. Feel your eyes in the sockets. That point on the eyes or feel the, the general outline of the body. Sense the head on the top, arms to the side. some deep slow breathing. Take two or three seconds to expand your abdomen, rib cage and upper chest. Draw the air into the upper chest, hold it in for a few seconds. Then slowly breathe out. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Then the next in breath. Continue doing that deep, slow breathing, developing this mindfulness, breathing in, letting go of the past and future, breathing out, standing here and now. Now we're going to combine the breathing with movements, in the movement while breathing in, holding the position for two seconds, returning to the starting point on the out breath, repeating each one three times. On the next in breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms, stretch your head back. Look up at the ceiling, stretch upwards. In the out breath, release your fingers, arms back to the sides. Again, in breath, arms over the head, stretch the hands up. Bend back a little bit to the arch in the spine. Out breath, arms back to the sides. Feel the sensations once more in. Close the eyes, feel the increased sensation. Clothing touching the skin, inner life force pulsations, tingling sensation, the aches or pains. Letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. of the body in the front of the awareness. Just remember standing where you are standing. Now in the next in breath, lift up on the toes, arms over the head, face the hands toward each other about six inches apart, and stretch up. Out breath, come back down. Feel the last bit of air go out. And the next in breath, help lift up the body. 
body. more sensations under the skin Straight out breath, bend over the right side. In breath, lift up. And the other side, out breath. In breath. Outgrowth going down feeling the body through the hands and fingers, about increased pulsation. Next, we'll do a squatting or knee bending. On the next in breath, lift up on the toes, raise the arms up front for balance. On the out breath, bend the knees and lower down, balancing on the balls of the feet. Come down as far as you can. A squatting position. Take a deep breath, push up. Put the muscles in the legs, pushing the body up. Out breath.
Standing, standing, standing. Present at the moment, body centered awareness. Now, spread the legs and feet apart, wider the better. hands out to the sides, maybe twisting from right to left, rotate in, from the out breath twist to the right, keep your eyes focused on the hand going back, let the feet turn a little bit, in breath back to the front. Turn the feet, twist to the other side, out front. In breath. Turn to the right, out front. Once more to each side. Be proud, relax. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Your hands and fingers. Feel the clothing touching the skin. So keep your feet spread apart, a bit wider, and your forward and backward bending. Just be careful with the back bends, bend back too far the first time. Just breathe in. And the out breath, bend forward, keep your Head lifted up, looking out straight ahead. Let your hands come to your kneecaps. You keep your legs straight, arms straight, and flatten the spine. In breath, lift up. Move the hands under the buttocks for support. Let your head go back and gently bend backwards in the out. The arcs in the spine. In breath, lift up. The second time, let the hands come down below the knees. So keep your head lifted up, legs straight, feel the extra strength. 
stretch and hamstring muscle. In breath, deeper. The back bend is the third time. Third time, let the hands come down as far as you can towards your ankles or feet, and then hold on where you can. Hold that position longer. Feel the stretch in the leg muscles, like the little bones in the lower spine. Stretch out. Feel all the sensation. Breath, lift up. Once more, the back bend. Be careful. Out for a Touching the outer skin, by force vibrations under the skin. Through the outline of the body and the mind's eye. Present moment, body centered awareness, natural awareness. Turning head from right to left. Through the in breath, turn the head to the right. And look over your right shoulder. The out breath, turn the head all the way back to the left. Look over the left shoulder. In breath, to the right. Concentrate into the neck vertebrae. More to the side. In the in breath, let the head stop in the middle. Centered awareness. First stage of any deeper meditation.
okay. Now let's mindfully come back to our seats, ready for the sitting. Just get comfortable in the sitting posture. Just take a minute to feel the body. First of all, just focus where the buttocks press the seat. You feel your feet tucked under the body or where the feet press the floor. Try to feel a natural inward curve of the lower lumbar spine and gently lift the spinal column upwards. To imagine some space between the spinal vertebrae so the blood and life force can freely circulate and feel your head balanced on top of the neck. Feel your eyes in the socket. From that point down the eyes, again, try to feel the outline of the sitting body, sense of the head on top, arms at the sides, buttocks and feet dressing the floor. Clothing touching the skin. Just mentally remind yourself of sitting, sitting. 
You can begin some deep, slow breathing like we did in the yoga. Take two or three seconds to expand your abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs for two or three seconds. And slowly breathe out. You feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. And the next in breath. Just take several more deep, slow breaths like that, developing this mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to count our breaths from one to ten to try to develop a more continuous concentration on the breathing. I'll do the counting for you. Just try to follow that with your breathing and concentration. So with the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the breath in for a second. And with the contracting out breath, also count to one. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lung. The next in breath, two. Out breath to in three out three. In four, out four, in five. Out five in six out six. In seven, out seven, in eight. Out eight in 
Yenain Out nine in ten out ten. Now just continue the counting. Let your breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. You continue to feel it, to observe it. Keep your attention focused in the middle of the body. Sort of feel like a scientist looking down through a microscope, focusing in on subtler residual breathing sensation. Just knowing when the breath is coming in. And knowing when the breath is going out. You know it by feeling. Try to feel where the clothing rubs against the skin of the stomach, rib cage, or chest. It expands and contracts, creating friction sensations. Make that the primary focus of your concentrated awareness. You can make these mental reminders to yourself to help stay focused. In, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, or just simply breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting. The ongoing, continuous, present moment of this breathing body. Let's try to tune in to the four phases of each breath cycle. Expanding in breath and a brief pause. Contracting out breath in the brief pause. Especially try to feel the brief pauses between the breaths. Might just be a second. If you can feel those pauses, it just sharpen your concentration, your mindfulness. Just breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting, breath by breath, moment by moment. You can combine this breathing with counting the breaths again you like, if you still have lots of thoughts, try to count the breaths from one to ten by yourself. You can get lost while counting, start the counting again at one. It's a challenge to count the breaths without the mind wandering off or going to sleep.
Be alert for thoughts sneaking in to steal your attention away. Keep coming back to the breathing or the counting. Each time the mind gets lost from the breathing, take a deep, slow breath, bring the mind back into the body, to the counting, just to the bare awareness. In, in, sitting. Out. Out, sitting. Pauses between the breaths, check your posture to keep the chin lifted up level, to reestablish the inward curve of the lower spine, to keep the spine straight. Keep the outline of the body in the mind's eye.
The mind is calm enough, centered enough in the body, opening up to feel the other sensations in the body coming and going. The breathing is always still there in the center, but around the breathing, feel so many different sensations, pulsations, prickly sensations, sensations of the clothing touching the skin, the little aches or pains. Must be aware of the stream of thoughts moving through the back of the mind, waiting to come in, be aware of any urges to move. From time to time, take a few deep, slow breaths. Keep, help, stay grounded, awake in the body. Breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting, so many different sensations come and go, sounds come and go, perceptions, thoughts, ideas come and go. Thoughts of I, me, or mine come and go. These are just the constant flow of change and impermanence of the five aggregates of body and mind and their nature of constant change and impermanence. They're all just coming and going through this expanded breathing body awareness. Just be alert to how quickly certain sensations or thoughts just arise and vanish on their own.
you want to think about something, contemplate your, about the karma, the order of your action. or any of those other reflections. From time to time, take a few deep, slow breaths. Keep the bloodstream oxygenated. Help stay grounded awake in the body. Breath by breath. Moment by moment.
you have good awareness and are noticing many sensation, flow of impermanence, just try to feel or become like being an empty house, just breathing body like an empty house with nobody home to answer the call knocking at the doors and windows. There's a sensitive microphone in the house. Awareness that knows but doesn't know, doesn't react. And now let's spend the last few minutes of the meditation cultivating thought vibrations of metta or friendliness, kindness, best wishes towards our own body and mind, and spreading that outward toward all living beings. And then just keep watching your body sitting there, sitting and breathing, take a few more deep slow breaths as you breathe in and hold the air in the lungs but imagine that oxygenated blood going out to all the cells of the body charging them up with life force and feeling the relaxing healing relaxing sensation on the out breath 
doing the deep breathing like that, it's like sending metta to your own body and mind, being kind, friendly to your own body and mind, taking deep, slow breaths, as well cultivating these train of thought. May I be well, peaceful and wise. May I be free from <clears throat> pains and suffering of body and mind due to my unskillful thought, speech and actions. May I have the patience, strength, mindfulness and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life and be able to continue to deepen my understanding of the Dhamma and the practice of meditation to help free the mind from confusion and suffering. May I be well, peaceful and wise. And with each out-breath, with each heart, be just imagine these waves of these metta thoughts going outward to all other beings with each out breath and heartbeat just imagine these waves of metta going back to your family friends going out across the, the city and the valleys the countryside spreading out across the whole state and you know, eventually across the whole country, over the oceans to all the continents, eventually surrounding the whole earth with these vibrations of loving kindness, the idea that may all living beings, wherever they might be, living near or far away, rich or the poor, strong or the weak, famous or the obscure. May all living beings be well, happy and peaceful, free from greed, hatred, fear and ignorance, free from self-created pains and sufferings due to their unskillful thought, speech and actions. May all beings have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. And may all beings have the opportunity to hear the teachings of the Dhamma and to learn and practice meditation to help free their minds from confusion and self-created suffering. May all beings be able to live peacefully and harmoniously together, understanding the ultimate interconnectedness and interdependence of all things. May all beings be well, peaceful and wise. May all beings be well, peaceful, and wise. It's like a mantra reverberating throughout space. Well, peaceful, and wise.
Now to finish the meditation, I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. We can do the chanting on a long out breath with those vibrations, those healing vibrations in your body and mind. So take a deep breath. So Now place your hands at the edge of your knees. Take one more deep, slow breath. As you breathe in, stretch your head back, pull the hands on your knees to arch the spine backward. Look up at the ceiling. And lift the head up on an in-breath. On the out-breath, press the chin to the top of the chest. To stretch the neck vertebrae. Mm. Lift the chin up level on an in breath. And then relax on the out breath. Put a smile on your face. Yeah. Okay, friends. So this brings our Dhamma discussion and meditation practice to an end. But as I always say, mindfulness should never end, especially uh, try to practice the M&Ms every hour during the day to stop what you're doing, to take a deep, slow breath, bring the mind back to the present moment of the body, to let go of any thoughts that you have, negative thoughts or any rushing to the future, Just feel the vibrations of the body, bring back your understanding of the Dhamma. can do that every hour during the day, it will be a great help to, you know, when you do sit to meditate longer in the morning or evening, hopefully you, it will help you to have better quality meditation. Okay, so during the week, try to reflect on those uh, Reflections, it doesn't have to be long, just to kind of remember, especially if you get caught up in something, if you know your mind obsessing with something, just to, whichever of those reflections, uh, you know, can relate to that. Okay, so be well, be peaceful, be wise, be mindful, and Namo Buddhaya. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bhante. Namo Buddhaya. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah.